evening, John's Gospel, chapter number 9. The Gospel of John, please. And we're in chapter number 9. Now, friend, if you have come tonight without a Bible, please don't you be worrying. I'm going to read it slowly, and I'm going to read it clear tonight. So you listen as we read. And if there's somebody beside you tonight who hasn't got a Bible and you have a Bible, well, maybe you'd be kind enough to let them read alongside you because it is good to follow on in the Word of God. Now, we're in John's Gospel, chapter number 9 now, and we're going to commence to read at verse number 1. John's Gospel, chapter number 9 and verse number 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed, he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way therefore, and washed, and, and came see. The neighbours therefore, and they which were before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him, but he said, I am he. And therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know nothing. They brought to, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. And he said unto them, He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. And they say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called his parents of him, the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, He is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, Give God the praise, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he do? What did he to thee? How opened he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? 
Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. And we know that God spake unto Moses, As for this fellow, we know not from whence he is. The man answered and said unto them, Why, herein is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he hath opened mine eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshipper of God, and doeth his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto, unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add his reading, or sorry, his blessing upon the public reading of his word tonight. God wants to speak to us tonight about something that we're all very familiar with. It's something tonight that the devil uses to bring confusion to the hearts and to the minds of people. Something that the devil uses. Something tonight that the devil has used for years and has used for generations to hinder people from getting saved. And God wants to speak to us tonight about this thing tonight that has hindered people from coming to Christ. I'll tell you something about this thing tonight. It has hurt more people and left more people disillusioned about God and about their great need. Now what's this thing tonight that the devil uses? To stop people from getting saved. What's the same thing that the devil uses to hinder people from coming to Christ? What's the thing tonight that the devil uses to bring great confusion into the hearts and into the minds of people? Maybe this has confused you tonight. Maybe this very thing has hurt you in days gone by. And maybe tonight this is the very thing that's hindering you from getting saved. And hindering for, for you tonight from coming to Christ. Now what is this thing tonight that the devil is using to hinder people from getting saved? To hinder people from coming to Christ. What is it tonight? Well, this is what God wants to point out to you this evening. What God wants to speak to us about tonight, believe it or not, is religion. Religion. The devil has used religion, friends, down through the years to stop people from coming to Christ. And the devil has used religion over the years to hinder people from getting saved. Religion. Believe it or believe it not, religion. And let me tell you about religion tonight. It's the greatest curse in this world next to sin itself. Religion. I remember listening to the BBC iPlayer not so very long ago and there was a man on it called Jim Dixon. Now who was Jim Dixon? I'll tell you who Jim Dixon was. 
Jim Dixon was a man who was seriously injured in the Inniskillen bomb in the Remembrance Day, 1987. 48 operations that man had to go through, and he's still not he. That IRA bomb blew out the roof of his mouth. It brought out his eyes, right eyeballs, right onto his cheeks. He was left almost for dead. And it was the Stephen Nolan show, and Jim Dixon happened to ring in concerning near-death experiences. And when Stephen Nolan friend interviewed him, Steve, uh, Stephen Nolan said to himself, you know, Jim, there's nothing has stumped me in my broadcast more than what you've told me today. You ask Jim Dixon, say, what was the greatest curse in the north of Ireland? He'll tell you, say, religion, he says. And so it was. Religion. And you know, friend, this evening in John's Gospel, chapter number 9, you can see in John 9 tonight the awful effects that religion has. People talk about the effects of drink. People talk about the effects of drugs. People talk about the awful effects of the world. Let me tell you, friend, there's nothing has more of an awful effect in it than religion. This wee province is coming down with it. The kingdom of mourn is coming down with it. There's people tonight, and that's what they're depending upon to get them into heaven. Tell me, are you depending upon religion tonight? They get you into heaven. Let me tell you something about religion tonight. Religion tonight can do nothing for you. Religion tonight can do absolutely nothing for your soul. In John's Gospel, chapter 9, we have a man here and he's born blind. This man never saw daylight from the day he was born to the day he met the Lord Jesus. And the day he met the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus did something for this man away beyond human comprehension. Something that religion couldn't do. But the Lord Jesus was able to do. This man was born blind. And the Lord Jesus did something for him. That was absolutely miraculous and absolutely wonderful. But you know, friends, tonight, this man was opposed. And this man was challenged. And friends, do you know who he was challenged by? He was challenged by religious people. There's nobody on this earth opposes the message of the gospel tonight more so than religious people. There's nobody who would reject Christ more than religious people. Oh, religion will talk about God. Religion will talk about God, but religion won't mention Christ. Religion will talk about God, but it won't talk to you about getting saved. Religion tonight is the greatest curse in this world that we know of against sin. Now, friends, I want you to notice the first thing about religion tonight in our passage. And God wants you to see tonight, first and foremost, the curse of religion. Do you know what we read, what the religious people said in verse number 16? About the Lord Jesus Christ, this is what they said. This man is not of God. Now, who were they talking about? They were talking about the Lord Jesus. This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Do you know what religion does? Religion doesn't deny God, but it denies Christ. <laughs> denies Christ. Here this man was, and he confessed to this, these Pharisees as to how he was healed. And he said, a man that is called Jesus made clay. Oh, the religious boy says, this man's not of God, so he healed on the Sabbath day. <coughs> See, that's the old curse of religion. Rulers and regulations, people's damned in hell because of it. And this man was 
was cha total challenge concerning the Lord Jesus who had done this wonderful work for him. You know, I remember as a wee nipper. It was only a lot of years ago. When I was a wee nipper. And I went to the Good News Club in the Mackle Wayne Hall in Ockham and Cloy. And I remember this wee lady standing up with three hearts. One was a black heart, one was a red heart, the other was a white heart. She talked about the black heart of sin. She says, you'll never get into heaven if you've got a black heart. You'll never get into heaven. <laughs> and because you're not getting into heaven with a black heart of sin, listen dear your unsafe friend, I want to pause for a wee moment. You'll never get into heaven tonight if you're a sinner. You'll never get into heaven tonight because of sin. Listen tonight. God's not stopping you from getting into heaven. But your sin's stopping you from getting into heaven. Because the Bible says you were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And it doesn't matter how good you are, right you are, religious you are. You're a sinner tonight. You're a sinner. Do you know what, do you know what the religion in this land says? The religion in this land says you're a Protestant, not in God's eyes, you're not your Protestant, you're a sinner. Religion in our wee land says you're a Catholic. No, you're not a Catholic in God's sake, you're a sinner. Do you know what religion tells you in this, co in this country today? That you're a unionist, you're not a unionist, you're a sinner in God's sake. <coughs> you know what the religion says in our wee country today? You're a Republican, you're not a Republican, you're a sinner in God's sake. We need to sit up straight tonight and really listen to what God says. Because God says we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And that's true to me. And then the sweet woman, she put up a red heart and she talked about, you know, the Lord Jesus, how he died on the cross. And, and the red was full of blood. And that's what you need tonight. You need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. For your sins to be forgiven. Listen, this is what you need tonight. You don't need religion. I'm not up here to waffle about religion. Friend, you need Jesus Christ in your heart tonight. You need to be washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can take away your sin. And then she showed up this white heart and she says, That's what the Lord Jesus can do. He can make your heart that's black with sin whiter than the snow. And as a wee nipper, I listened. I listened to her, and I went home. And I remember telling my mother, and my mother, she's religious as anything, and would never miss church. And I says to mommy, I says, mommy, you know, I need to be saved, and I need to ask the Lord Jesus into my heart. You know what she says? Nonsense, she says, nonsense. You don't need that. We got you christened when you were a baby. And when you're 13, you'll get confirmed. Don't be talking about getting saved. And I can remember, and it was my mother that put me off. My own mother. Church-going woman. Wouldn't miss church for anything. Baptized, catechized, all the rest of it. And I'll tell you what the problem was. I listened to my mother. Who doesn't listen to their mother? And her religious beliefs put me off from getting saved. There was a lady who lived in Ahana Clay. Her, her name was Rini. And she went to a tent mission like this that was erected by the faith mission, conducted by the faith mission. And again, Rini, like myself, she came under conviction of sin. So much so, she went to see her minister. And she went to her minister and says, I was at that mission down the road there. And you know, sir, she says, I feel I need to get right with God. Can you talk me through it? I talk you through it. What are you talking about, Rene? Sure, you don't need that safe business, girl. Sure, you're a good woman and an upright woman. She has to curse her religious to me, religion to me. Is that you? Is that what's stopping you, dear? Is that what's stopping you, sir? It's not the drink. It's not worldly pleasure. It's religion. You know what religion tells you? Think? You do your best, you'll be all right. The Bible doesn't say, do your best and you'll be all right. You know what the Bible says? It's not of works lest any man should boast. Religion tells you tonight, as long as you live a good life and an upright life, you'll be all right. You know what the Bible says. The Bible says our filthiness is like filthy rags. 
The Bible says there's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. You see, that's the curse of religion. Like religion tells you you're good enough. God says you're not good enough. That's the curse of religion. It's the greatest curse in this we land. And then there's the conflict of religion. Verse 16 again, then there was a conflict over the Lord Jesus. Some said, well, hold on a minute. Maybe there's something in this. Maybe this is you tonight. Maybe you're saying, hold on a minute. I've come to this tent mission. And I'm hearing things I've never heard before. And since I've come to this tent mission, I'm feeling things I've never felt before. And since I've come to this tent mission, I'm beginning to get troubled about things I was never troubled over before. You know what that is? That's God, sir, taking a dealing with your heart. Let me say something about the Lord Jesus tonight. What who religion denies, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight is the only Savior of sinners. You turn your back on the Lord Jesus tonight, you're turning your back on heaven. You turn your back on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, you're turning your back on eternal life. You turn your back on the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, you're turning your back from any hope at all from escaping the fires of hell. Because the Lord Jesus is the only Savior. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ is not our religion. The Lord Jesus is a reality. I tell you how he's a reality. Before I was saved, I was in the world. I used to disco. I used to dance. Wasn't good at it, but I had a go at it. And I used to go into the pubs. And I used to be the local idiot. I wasn't a drunkard, but I was an idiot. But I'll tell you what did it for me. It wasn't religion. It was the Lord Jesus Christ that did it for me. It was him that put joy in my heart. It was him that put the smile in my face. And it was him that put the song in my heart. Not religion. The Lord Jesus. And my dear friend, tonight it's the Lord Jesus who went to Calvary's cross. I'm there tonight to suffer and to bleed and die for your guilty room and said, Listen, your problem tonight, sir, your problem tonight, love, is sin. Sin tonight. You were born in sin. You were shaping in iniquity. Listen, you're dying in sin. And you're dead in sin is what the Bible says. But the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross. There he suffered and he bled, bled and died in your guilty room instead. Why? It's because he loves you. God loved the world of sinners lost. And ruined by the fall. Salvation full at highest cost. He offers free to all. Listen, do you know why this mission's convened? We are not here to proclaim our religion. We are here tonight to proclaim Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. Listen, I'm not here to proclaim Kill Kill Baptist Tabernacle either. I'm here to proclaim the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior tonight for sinners. The one who died, the one who was buried, the one who rose again, the one who's coming again, and the one who's here to save you and to speak to you at this very moment in time. Religion. I hear it. I hear it. Go the bed. Wait till I tell you something. It's about time we got back to the Bible and preached the Bible. Because the Bible is the living word of God. And Christ tonight is alive. He's not a religion. A whole lot of boys try and turn the Lord Jesus Christ into a religion. Huh? He's not a religion to me, Will. The Lord Jesus is real. Oh, friend, tonight I thought I had life. I thought I had life. I thought I had life in the world. But I can tell you none but Christ can satisfy None other name for me. There's love and there's life and there's everlasting joy, Lord Jesus, found in thee. Yes, the wages of sin is death. Aye, but the gift of God is in what? Religion? Not a word of it. 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my friend, listen to me. It's salvation you need, not religion you need. It's salvation. And that salvation is in a person. And that person is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not in a church. Salvation is not in a creed. Salvation is not in a catechism. Salvation is not in religion. Salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Religion will take you to hell. And religion will put you into hell. But the Lord Jesus is the one thing who can save you from going to hell. Ah, friend, the conflict of religion. And you see there the care of religion. Look at verse number 33. He's, a, he's before these, this blind man's before these religious boys. Uh, and he says, if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Then they answered and said unto him, Thou wast altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us, and they cast him out. That's what religion and Luffy. Religion, what did it do for him? They threw him out onto the street. That's what religion did to him. That's what religion did to him. Threw him out onto the street. See, that's where religion leaves you at the end of the day. Religion only wants you as to what you can give it. You know what religion's after? It's only, always after your money. You ever notice that? It's always after your money. Religion, it's a grabbing machine for money. The Lord Jesus Christ is not after your money. The Lord Jesus is after you. I tell you something now. That's why there's no plate at that door down there. That's why there's no reason. We're not after your money. This mission's not about after your money. This mission's all about after your heart, after your soul, for us to bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ who wants to give you eternal life. That's what this mission's all about. It's not what the Lord Jesus Christ wants to take from you. The only thing he wants to take from you today is your sin. And he's the only one that can take your sin away. Glory to God. That's why, that's why we read, Through this man, the Lord Jesus, has preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. There's only forgiveness of sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and the Lord Jesus says, If you die in your sins, where I am, you cannot come. No matter what church you go to, if you die in your sins, you're going to hell. No matter how good you are, if you die without the Lord Jesus, you're going to the lake of fire. What did the Lord Jesus say? Whosoever's name was not written in the Lamb's book of life shall be cast into the lake of fire. There's nothing in my Bible says that you have to be a member of the Baptist church. There's nothing in my Bible that teaches us you have to be a member of the Presbyterian church. And there's nothing, friend, tonight that tells me you have to be a, a member of the denomination. Friend, tonight, you need to come to Christ this evening in repentance of your sin and find salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it's about tonight. Salvation is in a person. Do you know what religion teaches? Religion teaches that it's all about man trying to reach up to God. That's what religion teaches. Man trying to reach up, reach up to God. You know what the gospel teaches? The gospel doesn't teach all about man trying to reach up to God. Not at all. It's all about God trying to reach down to man. That's what the gospel tells us tonight. No friend tonight, listen to me. There's people that's walked out through that door, I can tell you, and it's gone by, and I'll tell you they're troubled. And they've told me they've been troubled. And they've told me that they've been worried, and some person today has told me the one that was saved. What one man said, he says, we have never heard this before, and I'm in my 60s and I've never heard the like of it in my life. You want to know why half of our churches are empty? Because it's just religion. I was talking about my last job one day and he says to me, Sir, our church. He says it's dead, it's like a graveyard. He says the preaching's dead, the singing's dead, the choir's dead, the organist is dead, even the church mouse is dead. And he says everything's dead. And the only sign of life in our church is the graveyard round the back that gets new arrivals every other week. Oh, friend, that's what religion does to you. There's no life in religion and there's no salvation in religion. And religion put this man out in the street. You see, that's what religion does tonight. 
wasn't the drink that cast them out of the synagogue. It was religion. They threw them out there. And I'm sure that man lay in the street wondering, what has religion done to me? Is this what it thinks of the Lord Jesus? But then I'm going to close now with this one. There's the cure for the religion because I, I, I think this is a lovely, wee, a lovely wee scene. It says, And Jesus heard that they cast him out. Verse 35. And Jesus heard that they had cast him out. You know what I love about the Lord Jesus in this story? The Lord Jesus, when he heard they had cast him out, the Lord Jesus didn't ignore him. The Lord Jesus started to go looking for him. And can I say something lovingly and tenderly tonight? Have you been hurt by religion? Have you been pained by religion? You know the Lord Jesus, as soon as he heard he was cast out onto the street, the Lord Jesus went to where he was. You know what I love? This man's religion failed him. But the Lord Jesus found him. Ah, the Lord Jesus came to where he was, you know. This man's religion had broken him. This man's religion abandoned him. No friend, many has been abandoned by their religion. But I'll tell you, friend, the Lord Jesus never abandons anybody. The Lord Jesus comes to this man. And this is the first thing the Lord Jesus asked him. He says, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He didn't ask him, Are you confirmed? He didn't ask them, were you baptized when you were a baby? He didn't even ask them, do you believe in the Son of God? Sure, the devil believes in him. He says, dost thou believe on the Son of God? You see, you need to believe on the Son of God. That means you need to forsake all other old nonsense that there is. And realize that you're a lost sinner. And recognize that when the Lord Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he died there for you personally. And he died there for your sins. And he died there taking your place in order that you could be saved. And that's the question God comes to your heart with right now. Dost thou believe on the Son of God? And I can see the man looking up to his face and saying, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe in him? And the Lord Jesus just simply with a voice tender and soft said, He said, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, Lord, I believe. And the moment he said, I believe, I was saved. Didn't take a big long prayer. Two words, I believe. And at that moment, he was saved. I believe. At that moment, his sins were gone. I believe. At that moment, his journey for heaven begun. That's what you need to do tonight. You need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and put religion out the windy for good and come to the Savior tonight. The Savior is a living person. He's a real person tonight. And I'll tell you, if we look, take a good look up at this pub, at this platform. This is someone the Lord Jesus transformed. This is someone tonight who was in the world. This is someone who enjoyed the world. This is someone who once did sit in a pub and enjoyed the discos and dances. I'm not green up here. I know the joys of sin. I know all about it. 
been there, done that, got the t-shirt. But friend, I'll tell you this. There was never joy back then as there is now. And the Lord Jesus is the source of that joy. And the Lord Jesus is the source of my hope. And the Lord Jesus is the source tonight of my peace. For I know tonight that if I was to die, I'll be in heaven. I'll be in heaven not through what religion has done. I'll be in heaven because of what Christ has done. And my dear friend, I just want you just now to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And see him tonight who said, I am the door. By me, if any enter in, shall be saved. You see, religion has nothing to do with it at all. And you listen to the Lord Jesus when he said, he said, I am the way the truth and the life. And he says, no man, no matter who he is, or what he is, or who she is, or what she is, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And can I say this tonight as a close? You need the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. You need to forget about all this religious rigmarole. It's no use. Religion has plunged millions down into the fires of hell. But the Lord Jesus tonight not only saves, he satisfies. And he says, I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Dost thou believe on the Son of God tonight? Wilt thou believe on the Son of God tonight? On the Son of God. For the salvation of your never dying soul. Wilt thou believe on him? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just, everybody now, bow your heads. And we'll just bring this meeting to a close in prayer. And before we sing our hymn tonight. Now listen friends. If God has been speaking to your heart tonight. And I believe he has been. Friends I want you to know tonight. People has been fooled by religion all over these years. And maybe you're one of them. Fooled and blinded by religion. <coughs> Let me tell you what the Lord Jesus says. You're not good enough for heaven. But him that cometh to me, I will in no ways cast out. I'll save you. I'll just take you the way you are. And he says, I will forgive you. I will save you. I will give you eternal life. I will bring you to heaven. And tonight you don't know what the final hours of this day could mean to you. You know you could meet death before this desert. But where will you be 24 hours from now? You don't know, nor I don't know where any of us will be, but I know I'll be in heaven if death comes to me. Friend, when it comes to your death religion, it abandons you. It can't do anything for you. But the Lord Jesus said, I will go with you. The psalmist says, When I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for, for thou art with me. You won't have to cross Jordan alone, friends, when death comes. Because the Lord Jesus goes through the valley of death with you. And it's the Lord Jesus that will bring you straight through to heaven. And friend, why would you deny him tonight? Why would you trust in some old dead religion? 
Come to the Savior tonight. Make him yours. And seek him now while he may be found. And call upon him while he is near. Be wise this evening, we pray. And Lord, we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with thee. And we thank thee for thy speaking voice. In thy name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Number six.